Howdy doody buckaroonies, my name is Cameron, better known as Venus Theory, and today I'm here with Rolly to show you how to get started using the Lumi Keys Studio Edition inside of Cubase. So what are Lumi Keys? Here we are with Lumi Keys, we've got it plugged in with the included USB cable and we can get started. To get the ball rolling, we'll want to set up and install everything we need to use Lumi Keys. So we'll first go to rolly.com slash start to create an account or log in if you already have one. Then we'll download Rolly Dashboard as well as Rolly Connect. Within your account as well, don't forget to take a moment to register your device to get it set up and tied to your Rolly account. Kicking things off, you'll want to upgrade the firmware within the Rolly dashboard. It only takes a few moments to do, and you'll need to do it in order to use PitchBend and get access to all the glorious layers of expression that Lumi Keys has to offer. Next, we can open Rolly Connect to get started exploring the wonderful and wild world of multidimensional expression by downloading all of the included software. Connect shows you all of your included software and purchase software tied to your Rolly account. We can quickly install any software or any additional sound packs that we own, but in this video, we're just gonna be sticking to the factory library of what's included with Lumi Keys. With all of our software installed, let's head back into the Rolly dashboard here and start configuring the Lumi Keys to the way we wanna use it. First off, there are three main sensitivity settings to be aware of. We have the strike sensitivity, or how sensitive the keys are to velocity, the pressure sensitivity, or how sensitive they are to aftertouch, and finally, the lift sensitivity, which is how sensitive they are to how quickly you release the keys. If you wanna set up a fixed velocity as well, which can be useful if you're doing maybe synth bass lines or something like that, you can use the fixed velocity checkbox here. Next, we can set up our user modes. First off, we can select a color scheme for each mode. We have Pro, User, Piano, Stage, and Rainbow. Then we can enable Pitch Bend and enable Pressure for each mode. Of course, you're free to set these up in any way you want, but I've set mine up with the Pro mode here. This is just a regular Rainbow Key mode. This responds to both Pressure and Pitch. So I have full expression in that mode. If I click the mode button here, the next one is just a piano. This has no pressure and no pitch sensitivity. This way, if I'm playing keys or something else a bit more standard, I have just a clean playing surface. Next up, I have my pro mode. This has no pitch bend, but it has pressure and it lights up the scale notes here. So I can quickly find my scales if I need to do that. And my final mode here is my user mode because I really like the color blue. This highlights the scale and has pressure but no pitch because I personally find that I use polyphonic pressure more than polyphonic pitch. Now that we've got our software installed and we have the Lumi keys configured the way we wanna use it, we can start using the four dimensions of expression offered by Lumi keys. But what are the four dimensions of expression? Lumi Keys has four different dimensions of expression. First off, we have velocity on or how quickly we strike the note. Next, we have velocity off, which is how fast we let go of the note. In this case, a quick velocity off is gonna have a very short release and stop the sound almost immediately, whereas a gentle velocity off is going to have a longer ringing effect. Next, we have pressure. In this case, creating a bit of a wobbly synth movement. And finally, pitch bend. What makes Lumi Keys unique is that it transmits each of these messages polyphonically, making it the world's first controller with pitch bend and poly aftertouch on a per key basis. These four dimensions of polyphonic expression work with any of your favorite MPE compatible hardware or software tools. To get things started in Cubase, we'll right click and add an instrument track, and we're gonna start things off with the Rolly Studio Player. I think I'm feeling more of a cinematic thing here today, so let's head up to the search box and look for maybe some kind of string sound to start things off. And we'll use one with the blue indicator here so that it's an MPE preset. I think that sounds pretty cool. And in order to get this to work with MPE, we'll go over to the inspector here and make sure that the MIDI channel is set to any. This way, all channels of MPE can be transmitted into the Rolly Studio Player. And now we've got access to our polyphonic expressions. The Rolly Studio Player has a pretty extensive factory library to get you started, and of course you get all the light guides of Lumi Keys to help you start creating music. Within Rolly Studio, we can set up the scale and key of our song to have Lumi automatically show the notes that are in key. In this case, we're writing out of G minor, so we'll set this to G and minor. Now we can see Lumi Keys has lit up a G minor scale for us, with the root being in a lighter blue and the rest of the notes in the scale being in blue. These light guides can be really helpful for finding melodies 
and also really useful for finding chords to create our tracks with. Rolly Studio also has a powerful smart chords feature that makes exploring and experimenting with chord progressions fast and easy. To do this, we'll go to the Smart Chords area and click the toggle here. Then we can set the type of chord for each individual note. Now, creating chord progressions for our track is as simple as throwing together a few notes. By enabling the Auto Inversions feature, we can create smoother transitions between each of the chords. And to fill out the sound a bit more, we could add a bass note. Because this is a string section, we could also add a little bit of strum just to mimic the small imperfections of a large orchestra playing a chord. If we increase the strum, you can even see it indicated on the Lumi keys here. And that's kind of neat. Each of the instruments inside of the Rolly Studio Player has a few macros we can use. Here we see we have controls for string mute, we have tremolo, and all mutes, just to dull both the strings and the horns. Then we have an XY control here for chorus as well as reverb. So we can use that to start dialing in the sound the way we want it to feel for our track. With our string sound set up, I've layered it with another string sound here, and I've laid down a couple other basic things like some drums, a piano, and a couple little bass hits just to start sketching out the bones of our track. So let's lay down some strings. Cool, that's sounding pretty good. I've got one more layer here. And I just want to use these to fill in a couple spots, so let's go ahead and do that. We might have come in a little bit hot on that last note, so let's double click to access the piano roll here, and maybe just drop that down an octave so it's a bit more subtle. The instruments in the Rolly Studio Player also feature four effect slots, so you can click and select any of the available effects. Then you can click and drag in the XY pad to control them. Here I'm controlling the filter because I've got that enabled here. <laughs> If you want an effect to be permanently enabled, you can just click the hold button to permanently enable it, and then click and move, and it'll hold the effect in place. On this guitar layer as an example, I've used the hold function to create a filter automation of the effect, so I've automated the filter to sweep up and open up over time to create some tension and build for the midsection of this track. Another cool feature I've utilized is on this guitar layer with the multi-layer arpeggiator. This is a three-layer arpeggiator that can quickly create detailed arpeggio lines by adjusting the number of hits, offset, octaves, direction, and the rate of each individual arp layer. This transforms holding down just a few basic notes into a screaming arpeggiated guitar lead line for this track. <laughs> Thank you.
I think we're starting to get somewhere, but I feel like the beginning of this track could benefit from a bit more spice with something like some keys. So let's add a new instrument track here and open up Equator. Then we'll find some kind of keys in the factory library. Equator 2 here is an extremely powerful MPE synthesizer. It has multiple sound generation engines, a suite of different effects, and deep modulation to design some extensively detailed and expressive instruments. It's got a sizable factory library as well to get you started, including over 40 multi-sampled instruments and over 180 articulations and variations. Let's click up here at the top to start locating a sound. So let's find a factory sound. I think we have enough organic elements with the string, so let's go for something that's digital and something involving keys. So let's try maybe this sound here. Let's go for maybe this one and use it because it's MPE so we can get some added expression just for some movement to the keys. Cool, I think we can work with that. To get a bit more fine control over the sound, we can utilize the macros inside of Equator 2 to dial in the tone a bit more. So it looks like we have a control for an ensemble. So maybe we'll have a little bit of that timbre and chorus here. Might add some nice stereo width. Maybe we'll add a touch of reverb. Sounds kind of cool. Some granular delay. That adds a really nice shimmery texture. And let's bring in just a touch of space. Cool. I think that sounds good. So let's lay down some keys. From here, we could do any number of things to start dialing in the sound even more because Equator 2 offers a pretty insane amount of parameters. We could flick into the routing tab here to adjust the individual mixes and routing of each of the engines and even individual ring modulators, outputs for the different filters, and different VCAs for the effects and the dry signal. If we go into the effects tab here, we have a total of 12 slots, each of which can be any effect you want, with all of this being freely modulatable. So as you can imagine, this is quite a bit of control. Of course, detailed expression and modulation is nothing without a good mod matrix. And if we go down here to the center, Equator 2 has a very detailed mod matrix. We can go in and edit the response of every single thing, adjust the amount and control and reroute everything as needed. Just like in the Rolly dashboard, Equator 2 offers some fast control over the five available dimensions of expression. So with the Lumi keys, we can adjust the curves for strike or velocity, glide or pitch, pressure being aftertouch, and lift or velocity off as needed to respond to your playing style. At this point, we're really rocking and bopping with this track, so let's use the Rolly Studio Player to create a powerful bass for this epic cinematic drop. To kick off the bass sound, I've got a sub from Equator's factory library here. Nothing really too crazy, just a nice, deep, powerful sub bass, which is going to act as the foundation for our layered bass patch. Kicking off the layers here is a sound from Strobe. It's kind of a modern, phasey bass, which just adds some interesting movement and dynamics to everything. Finally, capping off the bass here is another sound from Strobe that's just a bit more direct and cutting. Just a very acidy, throaty bass. Combining all three of these layers together, we get one super massive bass sound. To really make this bass super aggressive and upfront, I've used the built-in distortion in EQ and Cubase just to clear out the low end, that way we're not interfering with our sub bass and just overdriving it to complete annihilation. So now those two distorted bass layers sound like this. Really upfront and aggressive, and when we bring the sub in, we get that nice deep low end power. Now, with all three of these layers stacked together, we get one massive bass sound that responds to pressure to open up the filters and add some screaming resonance and FM. So, let's use that to lay down some heavy bass lines for our big drop here.
Don't forget as well that some of the included instruments in Cubase offer support for MPE. So although LumiKeys does come with a pretty deep factory library, it can also offer some new ways to explore your favorite instruments and access the four dimensions of expression like Retrolog or Halion. <laughs> LumiKeys is compatible with all major DAWs and plugins, and with MPE becoming much more common these days, there's really never been a better time to start exploring new dimensions of expression in your music. With that, don't forget to leave a comment down below and let us know how you're using LumiKeys in your setup. And I guess we're wrapping up here. So thanks for watching and hanging out with me for a bit. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.